Good morning, happy cooking, good afternoon, and in case I don't see you because you're in another part of the world, good evening. So today I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious and the best ever vegan puttanesca sauce. So the ingredients are going to be San Marzano tomatoes that I already put in here, olives, these are Kalamalta olives, you can see right there. Capers, in case you don't know what capers are, these are the cousins, olive cousins. They're related, they're family, don't worry about it. We have garlic, fresh garlic. And of course, we have as well some chili flakes, some red wine. I know it's early in the morning for wine, but the sauce doesn't mind. A little bit of uh, maple syrup. Use the B-grade maple syrup. It'll help you build more immune, your immune system. And of course, as you know, the best thing for inflammation, turmeric. So, uh, and of course, another anti-inflammatory cinnamon. So I always put, but it's just a little pinch. So the first thing that we need to do is start with boiling the water. So today, I'm going to use this amazing piece of equipment right here. This right here is the limited edition four quart. Amazing piece. So I've used it a couple times only, that's why it looks still very shiny, because it doesn't really have a lot of experience. We're also going to use the 12 inch gourmet skillet. This is a very experienced piece, which is I, which is one of my favorites. I absolutely love any of the gourmet skillets. So I have like three large gourmet skillets and I have like six of the 10 inch gourmet skillets. So if you want to be the best chef, best chef ever, you need to have a whole chef set. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to boil my pasta. So I started already boiling the water and I never put salt in my boiling water. I never do, okay? And I, and I will tell you why because there's no point, you know? I want to reduce the amount of salt that I'm using when eating and my sauce already will have salt so there's no need. I don't put any oil in there either, there's no need. If you use high quality pasta, you don't need the oil. So this is a um, Bocatini pasta, this is Italian. Absolutely my favorite noodle in the entire planet. Bucatini is the best. Uh, the first time I've ever had Bucatini was when I was living in Vancouver, British Columbia. And there is this amazing restaurant. For those of you who are in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, there's a place that is called Lombardo's. It's a hole in the wall in, I think it's around East Hastings or something. I can't remember, somewhere. Anyway, but it is somewhere downtown Vancouver. That place is my favorite. I hadn't been there for about 20 years and recently, last summer, James and I went there and I told them, take me there every day because I absolutely, they, they, I absolutely love it. They make their own uh, pasta there and it's incredible. Truly, truly an amazing place to go to. So anyway, so what I've done is when it comes to boiling your pasta, Put less water, not more water, because you don't want to be draining the pasta. I mean, some of the some of the um, vitamins that they put in here. I mean, think about it. You know, you have uh, you have calcium, you have potassium. All right, and so some of these some of these actually put uh, uh, thiamine. And but the thing is, all these water soluble nutrients that are put in the, or that come in the, in the semolina pasta, then you lose them in the water. And I know that this is not the Italian way, but you know what? This is the progressive way. This is my way. I like to be progressive about things. I am somewhat conservative, but in other, in other ways, I'm a little bit more on my flexibility. So this should be a new term, not liberal, but flexible, okay? So I'm going to make sure that I put only half amount of water because what I want is the pasta to absorb the water. That's my new way. It wouldn't be a party at Happy Cooking unless I am disappearing every once in a while. It's called my disappearing act. Okay, that's the magician in me. Okay, so here we go. So what I'll do is I'll take some, uh, some of these 
tongs and then just throw the pasta. As soon as it starts getting a little bit pliable, flexible, you start pushing it without breaking the noodles. Okay, so just let it sit there for a little bit. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with our garlic. So I'm using fresh garlic. You can use frozen garlic. You can use garlic paste, garlic, I mean, whatever you have at home. You don't need to go and run and get things. And in fact, when your garlics are starting to, to throw little, little tails, like little green tails, guess what you do? You plant those garlics so you always have fresh garlic. So I am not preheating the pan yet because what I want to do is, is I want to get my garlic out first. And you can put this with the skin and all. Okay, so if you don't have this little device, obviously peel peel the, the garlic and then chop it up by hand like you know how. If you don't know how, chop it as fine as you can. Okay, ah, this requires, you know, sometimes I overfill them and so they don't work as good. So sometimes uh, it's best to, to follow directions in terms of going slower. My grandfather would always say, go slow when you're in a hurry, okay? You'll get there. So one at a time. So there you go. Like I said, this little device helps me a lot. I love garlic, and especially in the winter, all throughout the spring and throughout the spring. I don't take it as much into the summer because it's a very hot substance, but it is really a natural antibiotic, antifungal, antiviral. It's incredible, probably one of the best substances substances on the planet one of the best because remember there's also cacao which i love the cocoa the cacao the real deal and coconut oil those are all my my go-to and turmeric and cinnamon all these healing uh concoctions that our great creator already put on earth so all of this stuff is made you know comes from the earth so let's do a little bit more I don't want to make it too garlicky, but at the same time, I want to have enough. So take the peel. You don't have to take the peel, but I like to take it so it doesn't obstruct the little holes on the inside. This little device is not that expensive, but... Okay, so that's that. Now, when it comes to the pasta sauce, I always like to, to, um, I like to cook the pasta sauce the day before. But in this case, I want to show you so you can eat it fresh as well. So now that I have um, my, my uh, garlic in there, I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to take, I'm going to take some of the tomatoes and crush the tomatoes. So that's the tomatoes and the, and, and the olives have to be crushed. In fact, I'll bring the garbage right here so I can clean up. Okay, so take some olive oil. Because what we're gonna do is saute basically the tomatoes. How much olive oil? About three to four tablespoons, depends how much you are making. And then Bring it to medium high, and then I have some extra um, Kalamata olives. And so take the Kalamata olives, and what we want to do is drain the water. Actually, I don't even know why I did it there, because I need to do it in another place. There you go. So drain it in the container and you can use either a food processor or you can use your hands. Okay, this is smelling already incredible, delicious. Lower the heat because you never want to make your, your garlic burn, otherwise it'll be bitter. So you can take a, a mash thingy or you can just break them with your hands. 
but it's okay. It's your home, it's your food, do whatever you want. Just wash your hands really good and don't wear uh, long nails. You know, I realized, you know, I was wearing a lot of gloves and I'm thinking, these gloves eventually are gonna end up in the garbage and eventually it's gonna create more pollution than anything. So the whole idea is to, you know, stop being consumerist or stop consumerism. That's why I have these fans that this Salamaster cookware is lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty, that means that this cookware will stay with you even longer than your children. Sometimes I hear that longer than their spouses. I pray I, uh, it doesn't have to happen to me because I love my husband too much. Okay, so this is nice and, and squeezed. So now what we do is I'll wash my hands and then we'll pour it there. And when you cook at home, tip, 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 always cook in a great mood. If you're sad, if you're worried, if you're this or that, nope. If you're in a negative mood, stop the cooking and don't do anything. So, okay. So this, the pasta, as you can see, is starting to, to absorb the water. So for now, I'm just going to turn it off because I'm taking time with my sauce. So now, since I lower the heat, I'm gonna turn it back up to medium high. And then you wanna do the same thing with the tomatoes. Now, also, uh, let's put the little capers in there too. Okay, let's take some of the some of the water out. Your capers don't need to be crushed. A lot of times, you can also use tapanet that already have like crushed uh, beef. I'm gonna use a lid. That way I don't get stuck on my beautiful green dress. I dress a little Italian. Okay. Uh, so the same thing you're going to do with the tomatoes, you can either use a hand blender or you can just use your hand and just break them. So, so this is going to be like a, a lot of sauce, but that's okay. And these tomatoes are cold because I had them in the fridge. Okay, so just crush them lightly. That's why I said it doesn't have to be like super crushed. Okay, and so this is actually San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. Absolutely delicious, very red. They already come in a nice tomato sauce. They're peeled, so you don't have to worry about the peel in them. Oops, I already seen a little tomato squirt, a little squirt. Okay, clean that up. Okay, so now, let's see our pasta. It's almost done. And that will, it pre it'll prevent you from getting burned when you drop in all that pasta and using two dishes to, oh, for this concoction. It, it's just, no, it's a waste of time. I like to save steps. This is evolutionary cooking. So let's uh, turn up this to medium high. And now I'm gonna get some of the other uh, thing is here. I love capers. I absolutely adore capers. Give me capers. Capers in uh, in Kalamata olives, the best. I'm gonna add the flakes, the chili flakes, spicy putanesca. It's spicy. Okay, it has to be spicy. Uh, I was taking Italian in college with my daughter um, around 2009, anyway. And so uh, our, pro our professor, he was talking about, he goes, do you guys know where the name Putanesca comes from? And I guess it was like in the olden days, uh, the Italians, you know, like the, the women who were like 
from the madame's house, the whorehouse, in other words, sorry, I didn't put using the word, but um, they were hot and spicy, right? So they invented it. That's according to my professor. Don't quote me because I have no clue. But I guess the spiciness, because the women were hot, you know, so they created this pitanesca sauce. Uh, because the putana is a bad word in Italian, I'm sorry. Um, but so the whole idea is like these women will make these sauces because the heat in the sauce will make the men get excited. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Not my story. Our professor told us that. So you just have to go with it. So anyway, so make sure that you saute very deliciously. And look at my pasta, it's already taking shape after 10 minutes, no need to use uh, any oil. You can, but this pasta right now, you can just throw a little bit of garlic and butter and a little bit of chopped up parsley and you are golden. All right. So this is sauteing really nicely. Remember, you, I'm giving you 100% uh, permission to share this video love this video have a watch party on your timeline with your friends and family and show them this amazing recipe so now we put the oil the, the tomatoes this is gonna be a rambunctious sauce so keep it at medium high the whole time And I know that at this point I should have been cooking the pasta, not after the other way. But that's okay. I'm very flexible, hence your flexitarian friend here. But it started to shape and looking really good. So now you add a little bit of sea salt. Not too much because we need to try it. And then we add a little bit of cinnamon, about half a teaspoon. Then we're going to add this, I need a spoon. Although I love Indian food, I don't want Indian food tasting on my puttanesca. So I just put a little bit. Not only will enrich the color of the sauce, but also it will provide some anti-inflammation in your body because I'm going to be putting wine and I'm going to be putting sugar. So this is right here, just maybe two to three tablespoons of, of uh, maple syrup. If you have no maple syrup in your neck of the woods, no problem, use brown sugar. If no brown sugar, then use coconut sugar, which is another of my favorites. Okay, I won't be able to show you this, otherwise I'll have it all over me, like trying to move this. Okay, that is looking phenomenal already. And so just let this cook. And what have I missed? Oh, the wine. Another little just, see? Leftover from last night. No, we did not drink the whole bottle. This was the third bottle. No, I'm just kidding. This was from the second bottle. Okay. And now you let this cook for a long, long time. So here's another tip, tip, tip. For those of you who are not cooks, you don't like to cook every day, then what you do is, even though I heard that cooking is great for depressing uh, situations. So anytime that you eat pasta, it's good when you're happy, it's good when you're sad, it's good when you're mad, pasta to the people always, okay? So uh, the pasta pretty much is already done it's already absorbed you notice the pasta absorbed the water it's happy it's perfect so now what we'll do is we're gonna take this is the time when you can add a little bit of olive oil to your pasta see because you don't want it to stick so a couple tablespoons and then you take a little bit of parsley I know that you know how to chop up parsley. I just usually I gather it like really close and cut. Just watch your fingers, okay? If you don't know how to cut, then just go like this. That's how I type too. 
So before I wasn't a great cook. I didn't know how to cook. So I at first, so at first, I just did this. Okay, common sense. You have a brain. Use it. Okay. But once you learn how to cut, okay. I still don't know how to cut, but I pretend I did. No, I actually took a little bit of courses in the Culinary Institute in Napa Valley, and they taught me how to use the knives. Now, you ask me if I follow still? Sometimes. So, so look at this. Just this alone is perfect, and I'm gonna show it to you. My husband sometimes doesn't like to eat pasta every day, even though he is Italian descent, hence the name Canti. Um, but uh, he will eat this with um, quinoa, and sometimes he, he will just eat it like that. It's just so amazing. Anyway, so let me show you before I leave because I'm almost done here. Let me show you the pasta and not even a drop of water. See how beautiful? And the sauce, let me try it for, for, uh, for heat. I want to try it for heat and, and I want to try it also for salt and for flavor. So if I need anything more, I'll do that. So now, uh, oh, I was telling, so now this sauce is going to sit for at least 15, 20 minutes. My pasta's already done. And so the tip, tip, tip for people who are not cooks and they don't like to cook every day, once you cook this pasta like this, then you just let it cool off. Don't overcook it, okay? Don't overcook it. Just let it, uh, let it sit in the water, just like I told you. Boil the water for 10 minutes, okay? Or for as long as it takes to boil. Then throw in the pasta, keep it for 10 minutes. In this case, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze some of it. I actually uh, boiled it in the water for five minutes, then I turned it off. And then from there, just let the water, because it's really hot, and the best part about Salamaster is, because it's even heat distribution, then I don't need to be stirring, so the heat is tip to tip, so it'll stay hot even like right now, super hot, okay? So back to the sauce, back to the tasting of the sauce. So all these chunks, by the way, they're all gonna go off. You know, you're gonna keep this sauce for a while. I mean, for me, when I make like a 16 quart of this sauce, guess what? I let it cook like for four or five hours. And then the next day, I cook it again for at least one or two hours. And the, and the, and the sauce is so rich in color and so rich in flavors and so delicious. It's like, you'll just have to make it to believe what I'm saying. Okay, let me try. Mmm, delicious. Doesn't need anything. No more salt, and you notice how little bit of salt I put? Because you have to understand, when they put these in a can, I'm sure they already have salt. So that's why, no salt on the pasta, don't need, not too much salt on your sauce, but it is spicy, I can tell you. And, um, and like I said, some of the ingredients, like capers are already very salty, um, believe it or not. And the same thing with, um, what's the other one? Kalamata olives, they already feel, taste a little bit salty. So, mm. absolutely superb. So anyway, I hope that you learned something today. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll send a picture to you guys in a little bit. But remember, when you cook, Cook as if you're in love, even if you don't know how to cook. Put your love into the cooking so your family, when they're going to eat it, they're going to feel that love and they'll feel secure and they will feel certainty that someone loves them every day, no matter what. And I want to thank you so much again for loving me, for coming to see my live videos, for making my recipes that I am teaching you, for following me on Facebook, for following me on YouTube. And if you haven't gone and visited my page on YouTube, it's, it's called The Happy Cooking Club. This one is called Only Happy Cooking Club. It doesn't have the T-H-E. Um, but in the, in, in the YouTube is The Happy Cooking Club. You'll see this face here. And you'll see me with the cookware. And you'll see all my videos. So just click on video and you'll have like hundreds of videos. And I am uploading more videos every day. So I trust that I will see you again. So make this recipe. And until then, this is your flexitarian friend, Jael Tanti. Have a happy, healthy, and wealthy day. Love you all. Peace.